don't go away. On today's episode of Doggy Dilemmas, Benny, the seven pound Yorkie Terror. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Welcome to another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. I'm Denise Mazzola. Today, we're gonna work with my little friend here, Benny. As you saw last week, or hopefully you saw last week, Benny is a real terror. He's got a lot of issues. So let's review the issues, and don't let his cute little face fool you. See? Stop. Oh, aren't you cute? So, it's not unusual that a dog that has some guarding issues, a lot of guarding issues, also has what we call handling issues. He can't stop, he has no tolerance for any level of frustration. Again, that's one reason I have the leash on him, is so that I don't always have to handle him if I don't need to. <laughs> so let's review what we're gonna do today. We're going to address the resource guarding, and I have been watching him the last week or so to find things that he is not guarding because that's what I need to start with. <laughs> what are you doing? So as you, oh, no, you can't have the food. Come here, baby. So again, see the leash just allows me to pull him away. I don't have to get my hands on him right away. We're gonna work on the handling where um, we're gonna try to build up his level of frustration so that he can tolerate some of that. But first we're gonna do the guarding. So. Resource guarding is very misunderstood by most people, and it was years ago until I finally understood it as well. What is happening is Benny is having a very strong emotional response, and it becomes aggressive because it's a dog. And we as humans really want to force that item away from him. We want to dominate him. The word dominate is rampant in the dog training world. It's used and misused. But really the reality is that the most, the animal that dominates the most is human beings. So when an animal, a dog, gets something, especially a little dog like this, gets a tissue and starts to become aggressive, it does something inside of us that we're just like, really? And we want to take it away. And that's not going to help the situation. One, you're going to get bit. And two, you're not gonna help change Benny's emotional response at all. So that's the first thing we need to do, is we need to change his emotional response. We're gonna do that by using Pavlov science of classical conditioning, it's also called associative learning, and um, make it so that Benny will look at us expectantly, anticipatory, um, he'll look at us as he's very, very happy to see us approaching when he has something that he normally would guard. Okay, and the way we're going to start that process is with something that he doesn't guard, and that's going to be an empty food dish. Um, he did do a little guarding with the with the food dish earlier, so I'm going to have an empty food dish. Look at you're sitting there, perfectly picture perfect. <laughs> and the reason we start with something that he doesn't guard is because I need to teach him the rules of the game so that he will have some foundation to go forward when we start working with the, with the many objects that he already does guard. Some of the other things that I'm gonna be working with him on um, are a leave it command so that the owners can then say leave it and he will hopefully walk away from the item and come to them looking for something better. Um, we may teach him a retrieve and drop so that he can go out and pick something up, bring it back to them, release the object to get the treat. Um, so it's not, there's, there's, mal, there's many tactics to, to addressing this issue and they all have to happen at the same time. Now another challenge working with a seven pound dog is his size. I can't fill him up with roast beef or liverwurst or the session will be over because he'll be, he'll be, he'll be saturated, he'll be done. Because you found the pouch of good stuff. He's not eaten this morning so that um, we can set him up for success so hopefully he'll be interested in what I have. The leash is on for safety. If I misjudge and he starts to become aggressive, I can just pull him away if I need to. All right, you ready, Mr. Benny? So we're gonna start with the empty dish, which is this. I'm just gonna put it down on the floor. I'm gonna wait till he gets a little bit interested. 
and then I'm going to present him with some roast beef that I have in my bait bag, which he's clearly interested in since he's trying to get his head in there. And you need to think of the roast beef as um, $100, hopefully, to him. And an example would be, I have three daughters, and I love to have chocolate dessert. And unfortunately, my three daughters think that they can just walk through and you know grab some of my dessert with their fork, or that everything's being shared. And I become very res I've become very possessive of my chocolate dessert. So one of the one of the examples I like to give is if I'm all hunkered down. Let me put this down. If I'm all around my food plate and I'm trying to keep my dessert to myself and I don't want to share it, if they approach me and they throw a hundred dollar bill at me, huh? What's that about? So I'm still not going to give up my dessert yet because I don't know the whole game. But that's, that is exciting for me to see that $100 come. I'm like, oh, that's different. So then they walk by again, and they give me another $100. Wow. OK, and maybe by the third time, now I'm thinking, OK, so there's something different happening here. They're not approaching me with their forks. They're no longer trying to get my dessert so I can relax. I can sit back a little bit from it. And now as they approach, they're throwing $100 bills at me. Great. So in a very short period of time, they could approach, reach for my dessert while they're dishing out maybe several hundred dollars at that point because now they're going to take the object from me. And my emotional response is very different. My emotional response now is, yay, great, oh, come, come closer, come closer. I want you to, I want you to take my dessert because you're giving me something that's so much more valuable to me. And that's the same process that we need to use with Benny or any other dog that's resource guarding. It's not about dominating him. It's not about forcing him. As we heard um, Heather tell us last week during the interview, she watched another TV show where the gentleman to was telling the audience to put her foot on the object. And now what we have happening is Benny also attacks feet. And I'd use the word attacks feet. Um, he goes right after them. I have shoes on so that I don't have to have any problem with my foot. But that's another piece now that I need to condition him, that feet moving towards him are also a predictor of probably $500 bills, not just 100 because he's very sensitive to foot motion. All right, enough talking. Let's get started. You ready, little guy? OK, so you got to get down. Come on. There you go. <coughs> so this is probably going to look very simple and boring. <laughs> I'm going to put the dish down. I'm trying to get him. Come over here. There you go. There's nothing in it. He sniffs it. He gets roast beef. Not too many big pieces. And as I touch it and take it away, he gets another piece of roast beef. So remember, this is all about making him excited and anticipate his tail's wagging. The dish comes down, he gets roast beef. And I'm not putting the meat in the dish. That would make it too much his, and it needs to remain mine. And as I pick up the dish, he gets another one. So I'm just going to step away, step back. And give it to him. OK. So I want it to be that sort of mundane and boring to start because he's still learning the rules of the game. He has no idea what's happening. This is something that's not of value to him. He can't pick it up and get it in his mouth. Um, and therefore, he doesn't guard it. So it's perfect object to start this game with. So I'm going to. Get another couple of pieces. I'm going to grab some liverwurst. Because if you, have you, as you have heard me say before, liverwurst is pretty exciting to dogs. So it's the dish and the liverwurst. Good. And now I'm going to add a foot motion. So he sees my foot, he gets the liverwurst. See him put his little ears back? Huh, you thought that's different. The foot. The liverwurst. The foot, the liverwurst. He's not so sure about the foot. The foot, oh, the liverwurst. So you can tell, went too far. He still gets the liverwurst. I'm not reinforcing his behavior of going after my foot. It was my mistake that I moved it too close to him. So I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to move it out here and give him the liverwurst. 
I'm going to move it out here, and I'm going to give him a liver worst. So this is, this is associative learning. He needs to relearn that any foot mo movement, good boy, is going to be a predictor of something great, not of being pushed away, not of stepping on his prized possession. Good boy. So I'm going to give him cheese, and I'm going to take the dish away. And I'm going to move my foot and give him a little piece. And you can see he still looks. He looks very closely at my foot. Good boy. So again, because he's so small, I'm using little pieces. If you were doing this with a big dog, you'd have a, you'd, there'd be a lot of differences. You'd probably have to have the dog tethered. Good boy. And even if he has a reaction of going after my foot, he still gets the liver worst because I'm not encouraging him. <laughs> this is where people get messed up. They think, oh, you're just reinforcing him or rewarding him for biting your foot. No. I'm trying to make an association, and it was my mistake for going for moving my foot too close to him. So I'm going to wait until he finds it. I'm not going to go down there and show it to him. There you go. Good boy. What do you think? So there's a foot. Good boy. This behavior will also, um, not the behavior, this association needs to be generalized. Good boy. So it can't, he can't have the association just with my foot. He's going to have to have the association with everybody's leg or foot that's moving near him, that there'll be an anticipatory response to that. Good boy. And you can see it ever so subtly now. When I move my foot, you watch his ears. And they're staying up. See, he looks, but his ears stay up, which is very nice. Early on, they were going back, and he was getting that worried look, and now they're not. Now, I'm not moving my foot towards him. I'm moving it directly towards the camera. So I'm going to angle it just a little bit. He still looks with his ears up. Good boy. Yes. So he didn't, stand, he didn't st spend too much time watching my foot that time. He was all about, where's the food? Good boy. It's very subtle, the changes. Good job. Hmm. So this is different. Good. And really, my, my talking is more so that you guys know that he's done something well. He doesn't particularly care what I say and doesn't particularly understand. He just wants the money. Show me the money. Good boy. All right. So we're going to try to end it with that for the foot. Again, he's too small. I can't go and go and go and go. And we're going to go back to the dish. So again, technically what we're looking for, it's called a conditioned emotional response. And the acronym is a CER. So he, he has a very strong conditioned emotional response to feet and legs. And that response is to bite them because he, he perceives them as a threat. And he's been taught to do that because the family has repeatedly stepped on objects that he's guarded. Um, so that, that made the situation worse. Now we want to, um, put, we want to give him a different conditioned emotional response. And conditioned means that we're, we're teaching it or training it. It's not happening naturally. So now, instead of attacking feet, we want his conditioned emotional response to be to look excited, to say, yes, bring your foot closer to me. Bring your foot closer to me because I'm going to get the money. Okay. We need to do that same process going back to the food bowl. I'm going to put a little liverwurst in my bag. It's nice and small and uh, a little bit easier to break up for such a little guy. So I'm going to ask Benny just to move back by throwing a treat. You can see his tail is tucked. His ears are up, but his tail's down. He's kind of trying to figure out this whole thing. So down the bowl goes. He gets a little treat. 
up the bowl comes, and he gets another treat. Good boy. So bowl, $100, maybe 50 for that. And so I want it to only be associated with the bowl right now. So the bowl comes back. Good boy. What do you think? Huh? What do you think? So some dogs, when they see the bowl, they jump for joy. Benny's not doing that, which is okay. And we're going to put the bowl down. I'm going to approach the bowl. Good boy. And again, his tail's not wagging, but his ears are up. So I'm going to approach and reach. See his ears drop just a little bit when I reached. It's very subtle. They drop. So all it tells me is he's just not quite so comfortable with that. And they flatten out. And from his perspective, anytime he's, he has guarded something, he has something, people come at him this way. See how his ears go back? So this whole approach to him is bad news. And I have to break that up into very minute pieces of behavior from my part. So it's an approach, a reach, he gets the $500, and then I step away again until we can use both hands to go in there. So I'm going to reach. Good boy. So we're going to put a little bit of food in the dish. I'm going to go back to the liverwurst. You ready? <laughs> Good boy. So it's just dry food. The next step would be a little bit of dry food and a little bit of wet food. And again, this is really teaching him the rules of the game. Now there's no doubt in my mind that if I were to pull him away from that food dish that we'd have an issue, or like you saw earlier, if I moved my foot too close to him. All right, a little piece of roast beef and a little piece of liverwurst. All right, so it's that simple to start with. Come on up here, come on, come on, you can do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna let him figure out how to jump up here. Come on, Benny, you can jump. Come on, there you go, <laughs> that was good. Um, it's that simple to start, it's not you have to have your ses sessions need to be fairly short, very high value food. Again, I don't want to fill them up too much because I do want to do some leave it's with him today so you can see how to start that process as well. So tomorrow or tonight I'll do it again around feeding time and I'm going to break up the behaviors of I'm going to do some foot movement and that should be fairly easy to generalize which means I need to generalize it to all the rooms in the house and then I need to introduce new people who are going to cooperate and wiggle their foot around and um, hopefully not get bit and get and then give him some high value treats. So we're going to do the foot thing and then we're going to also keep working with the food bowl until I see him really get excited about, oh great, the food bowl's here, she's approaching me, she's putting her hand down, all of that are predictors of great things coming for him. Okay, let me show you how to start a leave it command. And the way we're going to start this is with the dog's scent, his, sorry, his sense of smell. So we're going to ask him to, we're going to teach him to learn to leave my hand alone that has the treats in it. So it's just the smell. Then the next step is we'll show him the treat. So now he'll see it and he'll smell it and he'll need to leave it alone. So it's pretty it starts off fairly easy. With a small dog, you need to be on the floor. The big dog, you, don't, you do not. I'm going to let him know I've got treats in both hands. And I'm going to move them out this way. And so that's perfect. We want him to try to get them out. So I'm just going to wait a second. 
<laughs> so the next time he walks away from my hand, I'll say, leave it. Good boy. And he's going to get a little piece from my other hand. So this leave it is taught so that, good boy, the dog will never get what you're asking them to leave. Think of this, good boy. Think of this as pills that you drop, something gross on the side of the road. It, you're, when you say leave it, you want the dog to walk away from that, whatever that is. Leave it, good boy. So it's a little Mr. Smarty Pants here. So let's see, I'll up it with a little bit of liverwurst again. What do you think? And I move my hands lower to the floor. Let's see if it matters. Leave it, good boy, so it doesn't. So what he's doing is exactly what I want him to do. I want him to do nothing. When he knows that my hands that are full of roast beef and liverwurst are on the floor, I want him to do nothing. Leave it. And then the money comes to him. Another piece. Okay. Leave it. Good boy. So sometimes it can take dogs several sessions before that they, they understand this, and they're going to be mowing at your hand, mowing at your hand, um, before they ever get it. And he's, he's picked that up fairly quick. Doesn't mean he understands leave it. It just means he understands that part of the game. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next step, which is I'm going to show him the piece of, uh, the piece of roast beef. It's going to be in the palm of my hand, so it remains mine. And what I'll do is I'll close my hand to prevent him from getting it. And then I'll reopen it when it's safe. And the goal is that he will look at the treat Look back at me, and then I'll give him the, and then I'll give him something from my other hand. Remember, he's never going to get what I'm asking him to leave. So he's back to bothering it. So I'm going to wait. Let's try to paw at it. <laughs> leave it, good boy. Right there. And can you see how challenging this is? I, I, I'm by habit putting treats on the floor, and I'm not sure that I'm safe doing that. But So if I put it here so he can see it, he approaches. I'm going to close my hand. I'm going to close my hand because he came too close. A little stress itch. He can see it. Close my hand. Remember, the goal is that he'll look at the treat and not approach it. I'm going to do it over here so you can see. Hmm. Oh, he's licking. Licking. So I'm going to open it. Leave it. Good boy. So he looked down. Whether he actually saw it or not, I'm not sure, but we'll take that. I want him to look. Yes, leave it. Good boy. So that was pretty nice. So you definitely need to be patient. You can't force this. This is a lot of the dog learning on their own. They're figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And what doesn't, what does work is nothing. Doing nothing is what works for him in this exercise. If he just stands there and ignores the treat in the hand, he's going to get a treat. But if he paws and licks and does whatever else he wants to do to the hand, um, then he's not going to get it, and he'll learn that, okay, that doesn't work. But you have to be very consistent. So um, let me stick with the roast beef in the palm of my hand. I'm going to close it. Ooh. So he looked, but then he's... <laughs> Good boy, but I don't think he's looked. Yes, leave it. Oh, well, I'm going to give him one. Leave it. Good boy. So here's another important piece. He has to be successful at some point, so I might need to drop my criteria. Leave it. Good boy. Leave it, good boy. 
leave it. Good boy. So did you see, I'm going to end it with that. Did you see that? He moved towards it and then he self-corrected and he brought himself away from that. That's very, very nice. So I'm going to leave that exercise with the leave it. Good boy. We're going to leave it with that. All right. So the other thing that Mr. Benny did, um, the handling issue where he can't, he has, he has no tolerance for frustration. So we're going to start a little bit of that. I'm just sort of watching him to see if he gets too full. I don't necessarily need this. And what I'm going to do is sort of reposition him so you can see it. Come here. All right, I'll reposition you like that. So it's going to be, I'm going to pick up his paw and he's going to get something. I'm going to pick up his paw, he's going to get something. I don't want to misjudge. He's not happy about it. I can feel his mouth in my hand when I do that. The food doesn't come first, or the food will predict that you're going to grab his paw. It's the touch and then the money. So it's going to be the touch, and I'm putting some pressure on, and then the money. Good boy. So I'm not going to pick up his foot. I'm going to touch it this way, and then the money. I'm going to switch hands. So this one, and then the money. So let's just talk about that for a second. So let's pretend if you um, really don't like to have shots, and a lot of people don't like to have shots when they go to the doctors. If the um, nurse came in and gave you a shot, and then immediately reached in her pocket and pulled out five hundred one dollar bills. Wow, right? That'd give you a new emotional response to having a shot. So you might say, hey, I need a shot. I need another shot in my other arm. That was great. It was worth whatever. If it's worth, now everybody's going to be different. Some of you are going to be thinking, yeah, that's not worth it to me because you have a real aversion to shots. I've had this conversation with um, some real sports enthusiasts and I said, well, you know, would you give up the remote control for a hundred dollars? No, they wouldn't. So it's not worth, so it all depends on, <clears throat> excuse me again, on, it depends on us and what's valuable to us. And the same thing, it depends on what's valuable to the dog. And if he, you know, if Benny has had a, um, you know, I don't know if he's had any serious issues with his feet or, or trying to have, I suspect that they can't trim his nails. I couldn't imagine that they could. Um, then, you know, the liverwurst isn't going to be enough or I'm going to have to change and do a touch do a touch, do a touch, and then until I can finally um, either pick up his foot or he starts to offer it that way and then pay him for that. So let's work that doctor's office visit in the other direction. If they came in and gave you $100 or $500 and then they gave you a shot, now what's predicting what? The money is now predicting the scary thing that's going to happen. So you're still going to have that response like, oh, God, here it comes, here it comes. Um, so it's the order of operations when you're when you are training and associative learning is very important. So um, when you pick up your dog's leash, many dogs have a huge response that yay yippee we're going for a walk. Why? Because the leash is always picked up first, and then you go for the walk. So the leash predicts the walk. If you were somebody that went for your walk and you just had your leash with you, but it but but um, you never put it on your dog to go for the walk, the leash wouldn't be the predictor. It might be something different like touch, putting your sneakers on or touching the handle of the door or putting your favorite baseball cap on that you always walk with. Whatever the dog starts to associate, oh, that's what she does just before we go for a walk. And then they start to get excited about that. So the order of operations is very important. That's why my foot has to move, then the money has to happen. I have to reach for her foot, his foot, Good boy. And then the money has to happen. And the fact that he's still watching my hand come is telling that, you know, I have not changed any emotional response, nor would I expect to today. Or we've got two things happening. I'm reaching for his foot, but he's wondering if I'm reaching for something of value. So I need to be careful with that. Good boy. So it's a little bit less. All right, Mr. Benny. So I'm going to. 
stop with that with him. Again, he's not a lab. <laughs> he doesn't have an ever-ending, come on, the never, come on, let's go. You can get up here. An ever-ending stomach where you can just keep having it, keep having food. Let's go. <laughs> so, yes, I know I could pick him up and just put him on the couch, but I'd rather, yes, good boy. I'd rather he learn to do that himself. With little dogs, we tend to help them out a little bit too much and we tend to let them get away with a lot of things that a bigger dog wouldn't get away with. Well, I would invite my yellow lab up on the couch. He would take up too much space, but the little dogs, we can do that with. All right, so let me just review quickly. Today's show is a little bit different. There is a lot of explaining that I have to do. As the weeks go by, we'll still be, I'll be working with Benny every day, so then when we do the filming on a weekly basis, you'll be able to see his progress, um, I think, quite significantly. And today was the first day that I've done anything with Benny. So you saw how it starts, which is pretty boring looking, not a lot of anything. Um, but then it will pick up from there. So the science that we're using is Pavlov's science of classical conditioning. You can also think of it as association learning. They, we make associations all the time, and so do animals. One of the questions is, or one of the difficult parts about this is, just exactly what is he making the association with, OK? So we're using Pavlov's science to change his emotional response to several things, to feet moving, just moving at this point. Eventually, I'll move my foot towards him. And as you saw, I made a mistake. I miscalculated. I got too close to him. He growled and bit my foot. Thankfully, I was wearing boots. He still got the money. OK, I'm not, I am not reinforcing bite my foot, get food. I'm trying to switch his emotional response to, ooh, see this foot come, I get big payments. And again, it was my mistake. You don't want to elicit that behavior that you're trying to change, but every once in a while, just like I did, you might get it in error. We're also going to continue to work with an empty food dish, an empty food dish, because he doesn't guard it. Because when it's on the floor, he can't pick it up, he can't shred it, chew it, he can't put it in his mouth. It's a very low value to him. And that's where I'm going to start his associative learning so that he understands, oh, things on the floor, Denise approaches, I get $500, that's great. Once I work him through this process, then we're going to have to introduce other people to the process so he'll generalize that. Anybody's foot moving towards me produces $500. Anybody walking towards me when I have something produces $500. I can tell you the last thing that we're going to work with the associative learning is the tissues because he's still, boy, tissues are a big, big thing to him. And, you know, it doesn't matter so much. He's a little dog. He could just eat the tissue and be done with it. Um, but the fact of the matter is that when things drop, we want to pick them up. That's our human nature. And we can't be worried that Benny's going to be there attacking us at every step of the way. The other thing we did today is we started to teach him leave it. And I'm going to be really excited to show you that as the weeks go on. I'll, we're going to work up so that I can drop a piece of food, no tissues yet, but a drop a piece of food, tell him leave it, and he'll look or come back to me for something better, knowing that whatever I've dropped is not of any importance to him. So we're going to teach the leave it. He has a nice sit that he does already when he, um, when, he, when he gets fed, and we're going to keep working on that. I may try to do some retrieve and, and return so that he'll go out and pick something up and bring it back and get payment for that, but the payment's only going to happen when he lets it go. I haven't started that yet because I'm a little unsure about what to start the process with, and I may have to find a dog toy that he won't guard that I can begin that process with, or it gets very complicated with him growling and carrying on. All right. So thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Doggy Dilemmas with little Benny, the Yorkie Terror. And continue to watch, and we'll watch his progress as the weeks go on. Having a doggy dilemma? Denise can help. www.denisemazzola.com Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years of experience. She specializes in new puppy consultations, rowdy dogs, aggressive dogs, and private lessons.